bad construction on the A372 in both directions around by the B3153. So expect some delays there. This is the three-way lights near the Kellaways pub as the roundabout is being constructed. That's got about another week or so to run on this particular stretch. And also in around Longwood Green, the A4174 got one lane closed and a speed restriction of 30 miles an hour due to those roadworks in both directions around by the Marsham Way. These are going on till about half past three for this afternoon. Uh, looking at the motorway network, they can, uh, seem to be uh, coping fairly nicely. The M4, the M5, and uh, no reports of any delays along the M32. Uh, looking at uh, public transport at Bristol Parkway, uh, we've got a cross-country service uh, to Glasgow Central. Was due in at 12.40 now, expected to leave just after five past one. That's it for now. If you do spot a problem and it's safe for you to ring, you can call 0845 900 6955. BBC Radio Bristol. Breakfast with Steve LeFevre. But talking about the Port of Bristol, there's a brand new DVD. I say brand new, but it features archive film mm. from the 50s, 60s and 70s of the Port of Bristol. An amazing port, whatever way you look at it, but especially from the air. Oh, right, OK. You go over it and look. And if you're on the Avonmouth Bridge and you look down at yeah, the port... Yeah, that's good. You think, who's buying all those cars? That's always my thought. I know, I think that as well. And when I come in to, from Portishead in the morning, sometimes I see the big car transporters. I think to myself, oh, blue's in fashion at the moment. Gosh. Yeah, there was blue the other day. About not, six not so of them all sure came that, out. So sure that they actually consider the fashion aspect no, of the I colouring. Think they do. You have the cheapest paint available. So that's on the show today. Any memories of the Port of Bristol? And then do get in touch. Top ten facts about silage. You were intrigued by this yesterday, weren't you? I, I shook my head in shame of the fact that I'm going to have to go and search about it. It's uh, perfectly uh, good stuff, and it helps our farms. Well, not just our farms, all over the world. You need your silage. But what is silage? What's it used for? And who consumes it? That'll be interesting facts that'll come through in a loose feature later on if she does it correctly. Hopefully. If you've got a fact about silage, I'd like to hear it, and Lou especially would, on this number. 0845 905 955. You were chomping on a bit of pita bread earlier. Yes. Yeah. Where'd you get that from? Did you bring it from home? Bring it from home, yeah. What was in it? Cheese. Just half now and then half later on. What a combination. Do you know, I, I take snacks in for my daughter. She has a couple of snacks in school, as well as a packed lunch. And uh, you're supposed to have two snacks a day. Yeah. And she never, very rarely, eats two snacks a day. So I'll often bring them home and then I'll take them in the next day. Unless yeah. it's a yoghurt or something dodgy. And she had a baby bell in her desk. And I wasn't sure how long she'd had it mm. for. So I took it home and had it for lunch last week. And I was eating on it. And I noticed on the underside it was mouldy. Oh. Yeah, I've survived it. In fact, yeah. there's probably penicillin on it, isn't there? That's it probably did me good, but uh, you've got to be so careful, especially with children. Yeah. Just like... <laughs> and don't know the exact date of it. You know, they were just given it by various sources. Um, and so we bounced this volume and the previous one off Colin and said, you know, can you just help us date it? We think we know it's a certain time. And Colin's able to say, well, that ship came in in the April of 1956 or, you know, because he was there. He remembers it. Yeah. So it's been he's that old. He's, pre- <laughs> he's one of a handful of people who would probably know. So and we've a- we actually changed the cover sort of quite late on because of Colin's input with this one, because he could he could redate certain films. So okay. it was very, very helpful. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in more detail in yeah. a moment, and, and I'll play a couple of clips. But just going back to something you said a moment ago, the fact that the, the city was built on the port, going back in yeah. time, as you well know, Colin, the ships used to come right into the heart of the city, didn't they? Right into the city docks until the, the early 1970s. And, of course, Bristol and its port have always grown up as one. Yeah. And then, of course, it, it, it expanded the... Uh, center of uh, shipping gravity moved to Avonmouth when Bristol opened the Rivermouth docks uh, over a hundred years ago now. Yeah, and this is the origin of so many cities and towns around the world, the fact that they're an area where transportation comes to a, a point yes. and it just sort of spills out from the side of the quay, doesn't it? That's right. Well, of course, the ships were bigger, so they needed bigger docks, so yeah. hence the Avonmouth uh, situation. Well, that's the problem with the, with the Avon, isn't it? It's, it's quite narrow, and also the tidal range is quite big, isn't it? Well, yes, it, the river rises and falls 30 feet, and you could only get a ship up to uh, th- um, five, uh, no, four and a half thousand tons into the city docks, or 350 feet long. Uh, so that was pretty restrictive, yeah. particularly in today's climate. Just give us your background as the, as the port photographer then. How did you get that job? Well, I was, uh, I've been hanging around the port of Bristol since 1954. Meeting doing... sailors. <laughs> <laughs> I've met plenty of those. <laughs> um, and I used to work in the Port of Bristol printing department in the, uh, the mid-1950s, printing their, the Tideway, which was a house journal featuring ships. And I used to supply several photographs for that little magazine. 
and then eventually I was asked to be the official port photographer. When decasualization started in 1967, the Port of Bristol uh, uh, created a newspaper called Portfolio, and they roped me in on that. And I was down uh, working on the docks four days out of five. There was so much shipping in those days. The atmosphere was very exciting, particularly around, around the Royal Edward Dock at Avonmouth, although the city docks was exciting too. You had the cobbled streets and some gas lamps still prevailed. But, um, uh, and in Avonmouth, the, uh, the, the, the railway traffic that was there, they had over 2,000.